Hey everyone, it's Stephanie from Scrap and Create, and we're working on page three. Page three. So I'm using this beautiful paper, um, and we're going to do a side pocket. We're going to get started with the side pocket, and um, this is uh, nine by four. Nine by four. And it's going to go. Let's see. This is page three. It's going to go on the left hand side. I have to kind of think about where my spine is. Okay. Again, nine. By four, you're going to score a half inch on three sides to form a pocket. Nine by four. I should write that down. So when I edit, it'll be right at my fingertips. Okay, there we go. Beautiful. I am going to write that down. I've got a little scrap of paper going somewhere with my page. Well, I can't find it at the moment, so let's go ahead and start decorating. So this is from the uh, scrapbook pad. Looks like I need to trim this down a little bit. And then we get it. Okay. okay, and as you can see, this is just a continuous pattern from the 12 by 12. I hope everybody's doing well. And then this is going to, I think I made it a little bit too big. I'm going to slightly tuck it in the pocket. I don't want to go too far because it will affect um, the image. So it looks like I probably need to trim off about a quarter of an inch. Oh, I forgot. I've got a flap to go over here. I almost glued it too soon. So this is nine by six, nine by six. I've got my glue, so I'm just going to go ahead and use it. Normally I would do tape here. Nine by six, and it's going to be roughly centered. I'm just using my grid. So we're going to come down an inch. There we go. Yeah, get back to putting this down. <laughs> I might have to re-wet it. Okay, now we'll back it up. Okay, here we go. 
voila. Okay. Nine by six square half inch on the nine inch side. And then we're going to have this insert here. And this insert is 11 by seven and a half. 11 by seven and a half, you're going to score at seven. And it's going to do a, a partial closure here. So this is going to go into the pocket. Now, the we're pulling this pattern back in so that it'll go nicely with page two. And um, it's actually going to go right here, which is going to look lovely. And then the insert, this came off the bottom of this print. I'm going to add it here. So we're pulling this pattern back in as well. So I'm going to go ahead and add that here so you can start to see the page come together and so I don't misplace this little strip. So when I trimmed out this flap, I went ahead and pulled this off and I don't want to lose it or accidentally cut into it. So I'm going to go ahead and lay it down. This in the pocket. I don't have this trimmed out yet. Oops, that was a little bit more of a nudge than I meant. So you can see that makes a nice break in the pattern there. This is going to go on top here. And I'll pull in page two so you can kind of see where um, I'm pulling this pattern back in and this pattern. So you've got lots of continuity here. Okay. Let me go ahead and glue this. Oops, not inked. Sorry, I panicked. I thought I wasn't recording. Okay. Go. Okay. Now, um, thinking about using this as the pattern behind here. It looks like it might be a little bit too short. Let me see. How much is this? This needs to be about three inches wide. Let me see what I've got. I'm going to pull something out of my scraps. Too much. Needs to be three by six. Okay, these are two now. That might be a little too matchy matchy even for me. I think so. But I do think what I'm gonna do, what I might do is use this for the inside here on the insert. So I'm going to trim that down and set it aside, or glue, go ahead and glue it down so I don't um, repurpose it. My glasses are so blurry. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And this was part of this 12 by 12. I'm just going to go ahead and make use of what's left. Let's do come down. OK, 
Okay, again, I'm working on the insert. Seven and a half by 11. Seven and a half by 11. And I'm applying this to the inside. That's pretty, that pattern right there. There's not a, maybe I'll try to find this red somewhere for the, uh, for the top side. Okay, now I have to uh, figure out how to keep all of this closed. So I gotta be careful from this point on about what I cover. Um, and this is meant to lay over the pocket slightly. Okay, so now I need something here. So there is red here and there, and a little bit here. So I'm gonna look and see if I can find something. I'm disappointed this doesn't fit, but I think it's too short. Yeah, it's just a little bit too short. I think I over trimmed it. I hate it when that happens. But it's not the only piece I have of that, so maybe this is the answer. Let's set that aside and I'm going to look at my patterns. Oh, that's another option. Let's pull in the page two again. I'm not crazy about that. That doesn't work. That was from the backgrounds, by the way. What do I think about this patchwork? It's pretty muted. Maybe I'll use this for the inside of the insert. green. There's a red in here somewhere. Here it is. The back side. This. Yeah, see the, the reds are two different colors. I just don't like the way that that's working. I really like this, but I want to use it on page four and five. That could be a backup plan. Since I know I want to use this, I'm going to go ahead and cover the, or trim out the back side anyway. I'm not going to cover it yet because I don't know what I'm doing with my magnets. Trim that there. Okay, will that leave me enough? Yeah, it will. Okay. I'm just rough cutting these. I may have to trim them again. Um, actually, this has got to be it, so I'll cut that side off. Okay, I know I'm going to have to trim them again. This is really more about placement, pattern placement, not exact sizes. So that'll go here. And then when you open that, it would be, be kind of nice to see it here again. So let's see what that would look like. It's pretty, pretty dull. So I think I'll use it here, but not here. And I think I, I am going to come back to this. So then the question is, which side do I want? So I need to focus on what's going to be sticking out on the top and bottom. I think I like this. So that's what I'm going to do. Trim off. By the way, I'm on page three. 
and it's build three. So if you're building in order of the book, you should have plenty of paper of this particular design. So that is going to go here. And since it's not really directional, we can flip it around until we like it. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So the other thing I'm going to incorporate here is um, this card. Or cut apart. So this will be centered. This will be raised so I don't want to interfere with the um, the presence down here and then I'm going to add another detail on the pocket and that's going to be what holds it closed so I got to think about that real quick could be could be this actually he looks they just don't work anymore kind of like that if I put this on a hinge, it could come over and keep everything in place. Which means there should have been a magnet here, but that's not that big of a deal. I just put it on the back side here. Um, but what I was thinking about doing was taking another card like this and having it here. So there would be a magnet there and a magnet here. And this would be attached to the pocket and this would close. And so you kind of get these this tiered look. So I'm going to take up just another random one. Let's see if I like that. I think I do. I definitely like this one for the top. I think the blues just work. And this one may be for down here because we'd be pulling in a little bit of red again, right there. Got plenty of these cut parts, so I can find a red that's a little bit better. Or yeah, that's too burgundy. Maybe this. Okay, so I'm definitely not going to place a magnet here, so I'm going to go ahead and trim this down and apply it um, so that we can keep uh, color matching without all the papers sliding around. So I need to trim this up just a little. I'm going to ink it and uh, secure it. Now remember when you're color blocking, it is um, uh, a good idea to mark um, your trim lines on the top and the bottom in case the first piece didn't go in straight. Here's how you straighten it up visually. Um, I think I was okay on this one, but it's, it's, it's the method I use to visually straighten it up so my black lines look equal. Um, because sometimes if it's an inch or less, um, it can actually warp or just go in a little bit wavy and cause that to be off ever so slightly. Yeah, that's too bland. This is a pretty non-traditional Christmas paper. Oh, sorry, I've got my editing software running in the background. 
hit the speaker. Okay, now we know it's not going to slide around. Okay. I mean, we don't really need to look at that right now. I, I know I'm going to put it on the back. But I don't want to do that until we figure out our magnets. So let me clear some of our visual space. So this was the the one I planned for the top, and I still want to use it. It just feels very bright, um, and it pops for me. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on a piece of black cardstock that I previously trimmed. And I have inked this. It's ready to go. It's just a matter of where am I going to place this. Uh, it's going to be on the top. I just don't know where exactly. I'm going to slide it around until we're happy with where it looks happy with the look. Okay, so I definitely want it staggered uh, from these edges. So there's the look where it's over here to one side or here. Now the other thing is what are we going to do down here? Um, this should be centered. It's going to move around just because it's a little bit smaller than the pocket. What do I think? A, B, A. Okay, I need to put a little decorative strip on the back. Just happen to have this, so it will work. It's from this from the scrapbook pack, and it was just a piece of scrap left over. Only a little bit's going to show when you open the pan, so it's really not significant. Could be anything, but I do think it'll look kind of cute popping up above here. I'm going to put this over and make sure it's right side. I'm going to go this way. So it needs to go right here. So I'm using this line to anchor it. Here we go. Okay. So that's in. I'm liking that. So far. Now, I think just to be a little different, maybe we'll use a circle here. Do know. I wish I would have put a magnet there, and then I then my problem would be solved. But I really felt like I wanted to put something in addition here. I just don't know what. Let's turn that down. doesn't have to show, but I was thinking I wanted it to. Okay, I'm going to look through my scrap. I'm not going to cut a piece for it. I'm looking for a scrap.
it up and see. I think I like it. I definitely like this. So, let me see if I've got that. What, what is the pattern? Okay. Not cut through. I must have been looking at it for something else. I didn't trim through it, but I think I have another sheet of that. We shall see in a moment. Ugh. Yes, we do. No, we don't. Oh, we do. It just doesn't have the circles on it. That was weird. Here it is. Maybe. Is this it? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. You got extra of this because it's behind the circles, but it's also on a background sheet. And this is from... The scrapbook collection. Okay, this is what we're doing. The tree, the red. I'm gonna pull that red back in. Okay, I'm just gonna hand cut. say it's killing me. I'm gonna have to give up on this pretty soon completely. Stamperia should say sell a die set that fits on top of their circles like Graphic 45 does for their tags. Oh my gosh I would use them all the time. And uh, I'm going to mount this on black cardstock. No. Here we go. God, it's really weighty. It is what it is. Hold hands. Anyway, if you have a die that fits great. I don't, the Stamperia circle is not a normal size. I do think the standard size is inside that line. But I like, I think I like the green coming out. So let me think about that a little bit. So the idea is that So it's this or all red. So I'm going to look at it. I'm going to cut this. Is, this one's already cut. So I'm going to cut it down to the dark and we're going to see which one we like the better. The best, not the better. <laughs> and then we'll mat it in black, add a magnet, and then all of this will close. Ooh. Ooh, that's tough. I like it both ways. What do you guys think? A, B, A, A, A. So off goes the green. Looks like it's a three and a quarter circle. 
if you have that if you happen to have that die cut size. Mm -hmm, three no, it's not. <laughs> See, they're, they're all off, an off size, but I bet a three and a quarter is about as close as you're going to get. I'm going to leave the bottom as is. There was just a natural cut line there because it flared out in here. So I'm going to leave it like that. Matted in black. Okay, so now I'm going to estimate that my magnet's going to go about right there. And those are always the last place I look. Okay, let's do that again. This magnet actually goes right about the center. Ink it.
Okay. There we go. We're ready to go. Okay, now we're going to figure out where that's going to go. Okay, that looks good. I think I'm going to use that point as my reference because I don't want the point to be in the pocket. It'll just get torn up. Go ahead and set that down and straighten it out. Okay. Now we're ready to place the second magnet on the back of this flap. It's going to go right there. And we're getting close, guys. There we go. be a little too wide. Okay, so we're getting close. We're going to wrap up by completing the insert. Let me pull that out. Close that. That's pretty. I'm happy with that. We'll set that aside and then we're going to work on what we're going to do here on the inside. Let's see. Oh, that's all right. I'm going to see if I've got another strip of this. And then we'll just use up um, the, the papers that um, we initially trimmed off of the yeah, larger pieces. That's too short.
I like this one better color wise. This came off from here somewhere. Okay, I'm going to trim this down to an inch and take a look at it. I should mark it. An inch is pretty small for my rota trimmer, unless I tape it to something. No, I'm not kind of. I have to manually hold on to it. It's super busy. And I'm not happy with it. No, I'm not happy with it. So <laughs> hang tight. I'm find something else. I want to go stick with the stars and the gold. Let's do this. This is from the patterns. Or I mean background. <laughs> I'm only going to make that a thousand mistake a thousand times more. Now we have A B decision. I think I like this a little bit better. I just think it's going to be a uh, prettier uh, frame around whatever we put in this, uh, whatever photo you put here. So I think this is four by six. Yeah, so it's a four by six photo. I think that makes for a prettier frame. Yeah, it looks a little blah. Let's see, get laid down. This looks very vintage to me. I think this looks a little bit more like the direction. These flowers, well, this is down, these are up, so six of one, half a dozen of the other, I guess. And I think this is the last part of page three. We'll find out in just a minute when I put it all together and we do a quick review. And then 
page two, page two and three. I think it there's plenty of continuity here, and I'm glad that I went with um, this red circle here. Although if I had to do it over again, I think I would have stayed with a circle. So something to keep in mind when you're trimming yours out, uh, whether you do it with a die or by hand, I think I would have just gone with a circle. Just because the way, I like the way it stood on its own, I don't like the way it's peeking out. So something to think about. There we go, there's page two, page three. And even though it's visually very complicated, it's, it's a pretty simple page. One large flap, one large insert that happens to have, it's a card fold over. So, okay, that's it, page three. See you guys soon on page four.